Pamela Jones is a highly respected actress who has appeared on shows like Rebel and Castle, as well as films such as The Ladies Man and Next Friday. Away from the spotlight, her private life has had more twists and turns than many of her fans are aware of. This is a story about tumultuous relationships. So you're not dating Usher, but you did date um, Nate Dogg. And a traumatic health crisis. Before we get started, don't forget to grab something to eat at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of tender and lip-smacking brisket beef jerky and bacon jerky. Okay, now let's jump into today's video. In order to get a better idea about Tamala's life and the choices she has made, we have to take a trip back to 1974. 14-year-old Roxanne Jones found out she was pregnant, and she gave birth to a baby girl on November 12, 1974. She named her baby Tamala Renee Jones. Tamala's dad, who was seven years older than her mom, wanted them to be a family. He even had intentions on marrying her mom. But Tamala told Vlad TV that her grandparents told him it was best for him to leave town and never come back. Tamala was raised in Pasadena, California by her mom and grandparents. She talked to her dad a few times here and there, but he was never able to play a huge role in her life. I, as a kid, suffered a lot from always wondering where my father was and, and what was he doing and why he didn't want to have anything to do with me. As she got older, Tamala realized his absence was actually a blessing. She told Vlad TV that his mindset would have hindered her, and God knew what he was doing by keeping her dad out of her life. Her mom went on to have two more children. Tamala said that while growing up, she was fixated on finding a way to provide a better life for her mom and her siblings. She started acting when she was 14, but it took her a few years to take things seriously. IBM was my first And commercial. you made a good deal of money. Yes. You lost all your money doing what? Well, how did you lose the money? Shopping. <laughs> After her agent threatened to drop her because she wasn't taking advantage of her window of opportunity, Tamala put her foot on the gas and never looked back. She had roles on shows like The Parenthood and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> Ain't it, mean it, mine it, mo. Now some of y'all's clothes got to go. <laughs> Her breakout role was in this 1997 film. Oh my God, you are the only man in this world I know dumb enough to do something like this. But Tamala told Double XL when she landed the role of Tanya in the movie The Wood, she finally felt like her career was on the right path. Sadly, life threw her a curveball. She told Essence magazine that right before she was set to start filming The Wood, she was filming three different television shows. She was so focused on her career that she was neglecting her own well-being. In an interview with Black Doctor website, Tamala said she had been experiencing debilitating headaches for a few days. She said it felt like someone was stretching a rubber band around her head and pulling it tighter every day, and over-the-counter medicine wasn't helping. She woke up one morning and her headache was worse than ever. She had the urge to use the restroom, and when she got out of bed, she had no balance and no control over her movements. She finally made her way into the bathroom and stood in front of the bathroom mirror. Within two seconds, she dropped and hit the floor. When she woke up, she noticed the right side of her body was numb. She was scheduled to appear on set for one of the television shows to wrap up the last day of filming, but she knew she wasn't going to make it. She called the show and told them she wasn't going to make it because she had to go to the hospital. Tamala said they told her she needed to be there right away, and they didn't have time to wait for her to go to the doctor. They told her they had a doctor on set who could evaluate her once she arrived. So she found the strength to go to work. When she got there, she never saw the doctor, and as the day progressed, she felt even worse. Her right arm was bent, and she was unable to move the right side of her body. Tamala said, on set, they kept throwing purses and jackets over my arm to cover it. No one seemed to think my condition was serious. 
After the day ended, a colleague drove her to a hospital where 23-year-old Tamala was told she had suffered a brain aneurysm, and her doctor told her she was lucky to be alive. After being admitted to the hospital, she had a few seizures. It took her about three months to heal from her health crisis, which was later determined to be stress-induced. Her mom and her grandmother were the ones who took care of her and nursed her back to health. Tamala dove right back into her career. She told Black Doctor website she kept the incident to herself because she didn't want anyone to think she was weak for undergoing a possibly life-threatening condition. The Wood was released in 1999, and it was the first movie she filmed after her brain aneurysm. She described it as one of the best times and an amazing experience. With her career headed in the right direction, Tamala was ready for love. In the fall of 2002, she began dating the late artist Nate Dogg. He's, he's, he's a bad boy. Right, he And is, I was yeah. in my, my bad boy syndrome. I'm not like that anymore. Oh, really? No. According to Tamala, she and Nate only dated for a few months, but he adored her and was thinking about taking things to the next level. During an interview with Wendy Williams' radio show, Nate expressed how he wanted to marry Tamala, and that's when Wendy unleashed her venom. RRG is unable to uncover the original audio, but according to sources, Wendy called Tamala a nasty name and asked Nate why he would want to marry someone who had been passed around the industry and had such a bad reputation. For Nate, hearing those things about the woman he loved reportedly made him furious. Tamala told Vlad TV that Nate didn't just break up with her, he went off on her. When she found out it all stemmed from Wendy's interview, Tamala went to her lawyer and had Wendy served with a cease and desist. Tamala stated, I could have lost my life because of what she said. She was careless. Following their breakup, Tamala had a brief romance with Charles Woodson of the Oakland Raiders before moving on with Cameron Gipp, better known as Big Gipp of Goody Mob. Gipp was newly divorced from R&B singer Joy and was said to be madly in love with Tamala. They kept their relationship private for years, up until 2004 when they started attending events together. By 2006, they were over. She told Essence magazine they were still friends and she still loved him. So, what went wrong? Tamala said that after four years of dating, they had a tough conversation. She told him she wanted to get married, and he told her the only thing he was married to was his career. Tamala added, being honest was the most responsible thing he could have done instead of dragging me along. Tamala was 31 and back on the market. She said she was done with dating artists and was ready to broaden her horizons. But first, she had to make a huge tweak. She told Black Voices that following the end of her relationship, she didn't fully love herself and she thought that making a physical change could help her feel better. What change, you ask? Well, during her younger years, she was teased for being small up top. Even as an adult while on set, she was asked to use tape on her chest to make herself appear more voluptuous. So Tamala did some research, picked out the best doctor, and booked a chest augmentation. When it was time to pick her size, she went big. Initially, she was very happy with the results. She told Smooth Magazine, I can't wait to get a movie part where I can show these babies to you guys. The years passed by and Tamala's life went into a tailspin. Her house burned down and she lost everything. She told Essence Magazine that losing her home led to depression and weight gain. She said additional pounds made it hard to book roles. She also had buyer's remorse for her implants and wanted to get them removed one day, but first she wanted to regain her confidence. She found a wellness clinic in Los Angeles and began using some of their alternative weight loss methods. In an online testimonial, Tamala gave thanks to her doctor by writing, I am so happy to have come from being a 147-pound out-of-work actress to being a 125-pound working actress, and I owe it all to you. By the time she was 35, Tamala told Essence Magazine that she wanted to be a wife and have at least four kids one day. What she failed to mention was that she already had someone special in her life, but the truth wasn't revealed until years later. 
In March 2013, TMZ reported that Portia Williams of The Real Housewives of Atlanta had secured a huge bag in the form of multimillionaire Teodoro Ngume Umbangmeng, the son of an African dictator and the president of Equatorial Guinea. The only problem was Teodoro was reportedly Tamala's man. In a since-deleted tweet, Tamala wrote in part, Miss Portia Williams. You may have a man, but the one you're claiming belongs to me. Check your PR or your head, but don't step on my toes. In a statement to E! News, Portia said the TMZ report was false and she didn't even know that man. She also replied to Tamala's tweet by calling her childish. Portia added, TMZ came up with the story. Take it up with them and your man. You seem cool. Stop embarrassing yourself. To say Tamala was embarrassed is an understatement. She later told Vlad TV that she had been dealing with Teodoro off and on for the past 10 years. His parents wanted them to get married, and she considered it at first, but she said he was too much of a spoiled rich brat. By the time TMZ posted the fake tea about him and Portia, Tamala and Teodoro were already broken up. Tamala said Teodoro asked her to post the tweet because his parents were upset that he was in the news for some drama. Apparently, Teodoro had a tendency of publicly embarrassing his parents and the country of Equatorial Guinea with his wild behavior and his over-the-top spending. She officially ended their relationship once and for all and apologized to Portia. These days, Tamala is still snagging gigs and is building up her impressive resume. After her role in the TV series Castle ended in 2016, she got her implants removed, and she's now embracing her natural curves. In 2019, she told the Nocturnal website that she sometimes thinks about having children, but she doesn't believe motherhood is in the cards for her. It took her some time, but she finally realized what's been holding her back. She told Vlad TV everyone thought she would be a teenage parent, just like her mom. Tamala said because everyone assumed she would have a bunch of children by a bunch of different men, she has done everything in her power to break that generational curse. Tamala will celebrate her 47th birthday in 2021, and we wish her many more years of good health, wealth, and happiness. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below, and thanks for watching RRG.